Hey, what's going on? So, as you can see, I've got Affinity open here. Ricardo Zay reached out to me after I left a comment on his video about how to build a grid and a basic web page layout, and he was working on a 12-column grid, and I had mentioned that there's an easier way to do it with the Affinity Guides Manager. So, I couldn't find a link for it searching through the forum um, or anything really uh, official through Affinity. I didn't search too hard, but... I figured it'd be easy enough for me to just recreate it. Um, I made this grid after I followed his video, but I went ahead and I did it in the guides manager instead. Um, so what I'll do is I'll actually just I'll just recreate it. So I'll start with um, 1400, and then I'll just make this a little bit larger. That way we got some uh, some bigger to look at here. Um, and I'll go to grid calculator, the way Ricardo did, and he was actually using 1140, I had 1400. Uh, if you notice, um, I used the 1140 grid in the previous one that I had made, um, but that was more just a personal preference. Uh, what I did was I actually made the, um, the whole width 1400, but I wanted a little margins on the side, just so I had something, like, a little more room to work with. Um, I don't know, personal preference thing. So, I'll just align this to the center. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> I'm actually re-recording the sound over this video, because I realized that I recorded my screen, and I did not have the audio set to record, so if you're watching this part right here, you'll notice that I'm actually explaining that I had set up on a 1400 with the 1140 grid, and I left some margins on the side. So, you know, that's, um, that's just technical difficulties, just trying to add a little sound here. Um, so... You'll notice that I lock the layer, and then I'll do exactly what Ricardo did. Turn on my snapping tool, pull the guide over, and then make sure that it's aligned correctly, and then you gotta zoom in, and that's a whole thing. I don't know. It's And then if you wanna make a new one, you gotta pull it over, and then you gotta be even more precise, and if you're not precise, then that messes up your whole layout, and if you're wireframing, that could be an issue. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go to view, I'll go to guides manager, and I can just click this add new vertical guide. So I'll use this grid layout here. Mm -hmm. And column width 95 pixels, gutter 20, margin 20. So on the other one, I made the margin larger, but that was just, just for me. Um, Alright, so... I'm just going to show you what I do real quick. Um, you do simple math in Affinity, and it allows you to do that. And um, that gives me my first gutter, but I went ahead and I added the margin one too. So I'll just do 40 plus 95, and um, I pretty much just repeat that for the rest of the video. I'm going to turn these assets off over here. Uh, that's actually something I got from Frankentune. If you're not hip to that, I just discovered them. Uh, they provide um, free vector brushes and free vector assets. So you can go into Affinity and you can like drag these assets in and they're perfectly scalable. And They've got a jungle package, they've got a science fiction package. Uh, those are the free ones. And then they also have a few other ones. I haven't dug too deep into what they offer, but I noticed that they do have a lot of free courses. So, um, what I'm explaining here is you'll notice that Affinity starts the guide manager at your midway point, which can be pretty frustrating. It can get confusing. Um, and then also, they don't allow you to make that guides manager taller. So, you got to keep scrolling. And... I don't know. Um, what I what I did is I just saved um, my affinity file 
that way I didn't actually have to go in and recreate it every time because they don't allow you to add a preset grid or at least I haven't figured out a way so if there is a way to do it please let me know and I will be sure to use that mm. looks like I'm about halfway through uh, as you'll see there I did 720 plus the 95 instead of doing 730 plus the 95 and that's 720 like that midway point it really throws me so um, that's why I like to keep that open uh, in the background and really just be able to see where I'm working at that way I can just correct things because um, affinity is not that uh, like it's just I don't know. They're still working on it. If you go to the official affinity forum, like I'm not, I'm not like a member there or anything. But um, they have a lot of great topics, and people will sell brushes and they share techniques. Um, I read it. I guess I lurk there from time to time. It's a pretty useful resource to have in your tool belt. Uh, just scroll over, and I'll finish these, and then. I'm not going to record over the rest of the video, but you'll get the issue, uh, you'll get the point. Um, I'm just going to recreate Ricardo's uh, vectors, I'll scale them up, and then what I'll actually do is I'll change the transparency of the layer, and um, when I actually get to that point, I'll just hold shift, or I'll just, um, and then I'll click all the different vectors, or I'll just go to my selection tool, I'll select all of them, and then I'll hold control and hold shift, and then just pull them over. And since I have that snapping tool on, it'll just allow me to recreate the grid super fast. Um, yeah, so, you know, I hope this was useful for somebody. If you want to finish out the video, that'd be great. Um, you know, give me a thumbs up, whatever, do your thing, find me on social, it's all good. Uh, thanks Ricardo, good luck with Affinity. I know it's pretty tricky sometimes, it's got some quirks, uh, this is definitely one of them, this guides manager, but if you actually go through and you create all the guides that you need and then just save them as affinity files, as you notice, it's just going to make your life easier. So, um, alright, thanks. <laughs>